Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of BS for Build. In today's episode, if you saw in the thumbnail that we were driving the Lambo, that's what we're doing. Right now, we're at Audi dealership trying to get a bracket, but the uh, game plan is to assemble the rest of the car, get it out of the shop, and get it on the road and see how it does. Should be my second time ever driving a Lamborghini. Stay tuned. So we're over here at Audi, uh, trying to what is the Audi? Audi, Audi. Audi. trying to uh, trying to get a, a bracket that looks and, and acts similarly to this one. I chose Audi because it's the closest one to the shop, really. It's owned by the same group that owns Lamborghini, so I thought worth a shot. A lot of you guys mentioned, you know, like 3D scan it and then 3D print it. That takes a lot longer than the time that we have available. I'm just gonna go with zip ties in the meantime if we can't find anything here today. Uh, we're just really trying to test fit everything up and then be able to drive for a little bit. Obviously, I'm buying the right real bracket from Lamborghini. It's only $10. It's already been ordered. So we're just trying to find something in the meantime. Let's see what they have available. We are done at Audi. They checked all of their like shelves and cross-reference part number and all that stuff. It's a no-go. Now I happen to know, because I own a Nissan GTR, that a Nissan GTR rear bumper bracket is the same pattern as far as where the clips align. I don't know if I can make it work, but I also don't know if the Nissan dealership here carries those parts because it's a pretty rare car. But uh, I think we'll run by Nissan and see what they can what they can maybe dig up. And, uh, and then if that doesn't work, we're down to zip ties. Well, although the people at Nissan were very helpful and tried their best, no luck. It's down to zip ties. Back to the shop. Help. All right, we're back in the shop, so we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the bracket that we do have for this side, the bracket that we were carrying around, and then we are gonna work on properly hanging that door and try and get it all lined up nicely. All right, the door is on. That took a lot of adjustment, a lot of different things to change and make happen and stuff like that. And we actually had to take the fender off while we were working on it, but we got it on. We got a nice panel gap fitment over there. It's nice and flush across the surfaces as well. Now this still has to come back off for paint. So it's gonna come off and we're gonna reset it again, but uh, you don't actually have to undo the hinges every time. There's actually some pins. This sets in a series of pins. You can loosen up the pin from the back and actually slide the door off upwards, which you guys probably saw. That's why we we're using that jack sometimes to pop it out of those pins. So the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna install the fender. All right, fender's on, it's lining up great with the headlight and the hood. It's got too big of a gap right here in the door, you can probably see that. We need to get the door a little bit further forward, but to be honest, since it's all coming off later, I'm a little bit tired of messing with that panel gap. We will get it all 100% dialed in before it's done though, I can promise you that. Next, we're gonna go ahead and try and install what we can of the side skirt. Now, I'm not 100% sure that we're gonna be able to install it because there are some parts that I've ordered in that I think we're gonna need, but we'll see if there's enough mounting points here to be able to safely install it and know that it's not gonna fall off during a test drive. Side skirt is on there. Now keep in mind, we know that we need to repair this backside and uh, we again need a bracket that goes inside there that I've already ordered uh, to do all the bolting, but we got plenty of bolts to go in there that it's very secure and I'm not worried about it coming off. We didn't install that piece just cause it's a huge pain in the ass and it doesn't matter. So we're onto the front bumper now. We ran into one thing while we were test fitting up the front bumper. So we have our headlight washers. This, this thing pops up right here and this is part of the headlight washer unit. Uh, and they are running into this 
uh, right here. Now we could cut this out to make room for these or we could uh, remove these. These actually bolt in and out so we can do a no damage removal. So that's what we're gonna start with. Uh, that's happening because this car is an LP580-2. This is a 610 front bumper. I like the look of the 610 front bumper more. Uh, so when it came up for sale, I decided to buy that. And the 610 have the headlight washers. I'm not sure if they're optional or standard. So that's why we're kind of getting this uh, mishmash. But it's really no problem. Um, I'm getting the bumper that I like the look of better. And we're just gonna go ahead and unscrew this, uh, undo the plumbing. And I have talked with some people and they're like, yeah, if you wanna run a relay to the motor and, and run a reservoir, it's, a, it's not a hard mod to actually install headlight washers. But I can't think of the last time in my entire life that I ever used a headlight washer. So I'm not really gonna do that. Anyways, we're gonna uninstall that first and then we'll throw it on. More than one issue with mounting a 610 front bumper to a 580. We found that there are two brackets on the inside that we had to remove that would let the bumper go in there, but now we have a problem with the venting. Some of the venting right here is hitting right here and right here. So it is now the time in the build where I get to take the cutoff wheel to my Lamborghini. Fingers crossed. We're gonna just trim the venting back a little bit. It's definitely very functional and we wanna keep it and it, you know, it's where it needs to be. We're gonna just go ahead and modify it slightly so it makes a little bit more room for the bumper because it's under a lot of stress right now. You can see that we got that side fit up okay, but over here it's just really not wanting to play ball. And that's cause it's just slamming into something that shouldn't be there. So we'll just help it by removing a little bit. It's assembled, we did it. So with that little trimming of the vents made it just a, a perfect amount of room for everything to match up and the airflow looks like it's gonna be great. So there's no problems there. We got good panel gaps around here. You know, we're missing this bracket over here, but luckily there is a room for a bolt to go through right here. So we got a bolt on the backside to hold this stuff together. We didn't install the fender liner because that's gonna be a total pain. I'm gonna save that till we take everything off to go into paint. So. Everything is together for the first time. We've got the uh, parking sensors plugged in. We've got the side markers plugged in. Everything's plugged in. So it's time to get this thing out on the streets for the first time. I'm super excited. We're gonna straighten it out, push it out that door, and see how she does. All right, boys, we are driving a Lamborghini. He noticed we're driving a Lamborghini. I noticed I'm driving a Lamborghini. This is very exciting. I'm a little bit nervous. We're heading to the Proving Grounds. One block away, not exactly the longest trip. First test, let's do a speed bump test with the front down. See, this is have a little front lifty thingy. You don't need to use it. I didn't think we would. All right, Kyle's gonna hop out. We're gonna do a couple drive-bys on the camera and I'm gonna play through some uh, Strata Sport and Corsa mode. All right, so with a lot of these builds, uh, we haven't got our title yet. I'll update you guys on the GTR title when I have an update. So far, a month later, still don't have it. That's kind of a bummer. Anyways, um, so we don't have the title, so we're, we, don't, we don't technically have registration, but we have insurance, but the state of Oregon says you're allowed to test race cars within 30 miles. So we're gonna, we're gonna head out into the country a little bit. And, uh, and and let's see, let's see how we do. We're basically a ticket magnet though because we have a four different colored Lamborghini right now with no plates on it. So, I mean, ugh. we've got through this before though. 
So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna head out into the country. Can't see if there's cars behind me. No. And away we go. Well, it took a while, but we finally made it to Mexico. So I want to do a couple of like 100 mile an hour drive-bys on the camera just to show you guys what it looks like. The car's doing great. So we're just kind of showing you what it does now. Three, two, one, go. That is a rush. I don't want to jinx anything because we haven't been able to pull it off yet, but this may, be, this may be a burnout car. We may be able to do a little BS for burnout. We'll see. One more. Woo, we gotta come out to Mexico more often. I'm gonna see if I can get it to do a burnout. All right, these, ne these never go well on BS for Bill, but I'm gonna try real quick. Nope, it's not gonna do a burnout. It's not gonna do a standing burnout. I tried, I tried. It just, without, without some lubricant on the ground or something, it probably won't want to anyways. Someday we will find a place to do more interesting things with the cars the first time we get them on the street. But uh, finding Mexico is really, really hard. We found another section of Mexico that was looking pretty good and there was a cop, cop just camping out on it trying to get people for speeding. And uh, it's tough, there are a lot of people around here. Mexico is crowded this time of year. So we figured since we're in the Lambo, we should do some uh, things that Lambo owners do. So Kyle and I are gonna go golfing. We have to go golfing somewhere where they provide golf clubs for you because you can't fit them in a hurricane. I remembered that our friends K1 Speed, those guys, they happen to be right next door to golf. So we're gonna go hit some golf balls and I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot them a text and ask if I can do some donuts in their uh, in their back driveway. They got like a loading bay, it's wide enough, everything makes sense, it's a huge liability. I'm gonna stop talking now, let's see what they say. Oh, that's awesome. That's so awesome. Guys, B is for broke key tags. You can throw those on your Lamborghini keys or they also work for any other type of keys. They are available now in the store right now. I wasn't able to get a hold of K1. Figure better not risk it with the sponsor's driveway. Probably not a smart idea. So uh, we're gonna head back to the secret BS for build testing grounds. See if we can uh, make some room. Highway mode. Oh, dude, that's so much fun. <laughs> the cars behind us were like trying to pass for a second. It's like, oh no, there's no way. All right, we're in the testing grounds. Gonna try it just real fast. Basically, we're just gonna do some tight turns. Just real, real tight turns, you know. Just got the multicolored beauty back in the shop, and I realized one thing. <laughs> See how, uh, yeah, that, that's a problem. The, the window wants to shut all the way, but this, uh, this isn't a door for a convertible. So the window glass is not for a convertible, so it goes up when it should be rounded right here. So, if anybody's watching that is selling the door glass to a convertible, let me know. We'll, we'll rebuild that when we, uh, it would be best when we pull everything out for paint. Uh, when we strip the door down, pull the paneling off and everything for paint, if we could replace that then, that'd be really good. And then we'll just, uh, well, yeah, that we fixed it, right. Speaking of paint, I have read your guys' comments 
begging me not to paint this car. Guys, my paint jobs, when I get them done right, they're good. They're definitely this quality. I mean, look, you can, you can see the amount of orange peel bouncing off of that panel. I can definitely do a Lambo quality paint job. The question is, can I get the right color paint? So here's the game plan. Kyle and I are gonna spend the next week working on this space and testing paint on the Lamborghini. So, uh, you know, don't, don't wonder like, where, why is there no episode or something? We're gonna do some major, major, major construction in here to basically convert this garage into a really legit paint booth. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a whole lot of crazy work that we got planned and that's why we're gonna take a whole week to do it. And then as soon as we get this space all done up and cleaned up, we have to do this stuff anyways if we wanna continue painting in here to lower the contaminants, all the sources for it and all the just debris and everything that's everywhere. It's all gotta be fixed. I got a plan for all of it. So that will be in the next episode as well as us testing paint to see if we can get a good paint match. If we can't get a good enough paint match to where I'm not gonna have to blend the whole car, then the car is gonna go off to some professionals. So that's the game plan. We'll find out how it goes in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. We had a lot of fun driving the car around. Uh, I'm really, really happy that we didn't have any major issues other than finding out that that one window just, did, just you know, not happy, not happy at all. But other than that, successful, successful first drive on the Huracan. All right guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Please remember to subscribe. Peace.